Welcome back to the channel, welcome to another vlog, thank you for checking in. I'm on my way back to Padley Gorge this morning for the third time this year. I've invested a lot of photography time down there this year, searching for early signs of autumn, and it's served me well, I've had some good images so far. So now we are balls deep, full throttle into autumn. It seems only fitting that I go back. And last time I was there, I was sat on probably the same rock, being greeted by a very similar robin, framing up a very similar image to Rob Bishop only 24 hours apart, which is pretty cool. But what would be even cooler is if we were both there at the same time. So that is what's happening. If you don't already follow Rob, make sure you go check him out. He's a great photographer, great YouTuber, which is uh, setting up for a nice day. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I'm back in the car, an hour and a half drive ahead of me. Um, as usual, driving coffee montage, but I'll make it super quick, super quick driving coffee montage. Let's go. Found Rob, and we've actually parked at the top of the gorge. Last two times I was parking at the bottom. Um, but yeah, Rob said to park at the top. And he's a bit more of a local, and it is yeah, it's a better route. You kind of only have to walk five minutes, and you're into all the lovely ancient woodland there, and the waterfalls which are behind me, which is he's framing up for now. We're not forecast any fog, and it's not looking that promising just yet, but still. We made a sacrifice to the fog gods. I sacrificed the beefy bear. Rob sacrificed the sheep, which I thought was um, a bit extreme. But if it works, it works. I've just tried framing up an image, but it didn't work too well. Rob's framing one up. Let's get a good start. But yeah, I'll see you once. I found some. But what is interesting, even at this first spot, is how different photographers are and what they're looking for. Rob's already picked out two things he likes. Well, I'm still working on this first little spot, which I'm still a little bit unsure about. I've tried a couple of little different things, vertical, horizontal. I'm not 100% happy with the composition, but I think there's some up there. So yeah, it's interesting to see what we're both looking for. He's shooting down river, and I'm sure he'll have a nice image. He always gets nice images, whereas I'm shooting up river. Um, but yeah, composition wise, there's a lot of little folds, there's a, a little line of them and there's four, five little folds through it and then it sort of snakes off to the back left towards a little bridge which makes for a nice little bit of background and then the hilt on the right is covered in, in lovely, or lovely orange leaves. The reason I'm not 100% happy with it is it could look a little bit too busy. I'm going to go with it anyway, we'll see how it turns out. Setting wise, the 28 to 70 on. Uh, we've just the polarizer, which is a little bit unlike me. I normally like them really long, you know, 30 second long exposure with waterfalls. But this one is working out at 2.5 seconds, which I'm preferring to the really long ones. ISO 100, just the polarizer on, cutting off that glare, taking the glare off the water. And um, F13, I'll show you where I'm focusing and that's getting me sharp front to back um, yeah let me flip this around show you the image there we are that's where I'm focusing just there what what I'm not liking the busyness is, is maybe this rock here but I can't get away from it I can't go up anymore to my right and I can't get over it anymore so um, we're just gonna have to see how it turns out two second timer there's the image Well, I don't think the fog gods were listening to us when we made our sacrifice this morning. Um, 
not an ounce of fog not even a, a sniff of it which makes it a little bit harder you know to, to make some sense out of the chaos to find the composition it's just all very very busy and with that Rob's gone macro he's gone tight in with his telephoto which I think is the right choice um, but I'm still going to try just one wider shot with all these lovely ancient gnarly branches and trees it's, it just looks really nice it's just a shame there isn't any fog um, but we'll have a go anyway we'll have a go what I've got set up is in portrait looking down the path with some nice autumnal colour around the path gnarly branches coming off either side of a trail trying not to get too much sky in it being sure to not peak them highlights just the polarizer on still the 28 to 70 at 70 quite low to the ground and i think i'm going to have to do a focus stack i'm struggling to get this rock in the foreground which is quite close in focus as well as getting the, the trees in the back sharp um and I'll, I'll manually focus that rather than auto focus so i'll show you the back of the camera there we have it just the polarizer on I'm up to ISO 800 to have a quicker shutter speed because it's quite windy I don't want too much leaf leaf blare so I think 0.3 of the second should be okay so fair shot I'm focusing on them trees at the back and then I'll do a second one blend in Photoshop and see how it looks here's the image Let's go see what Rob's up to. I can see um, he's found some more shrooms. He's good at his macro stuff. He does, um, I've seen him do a fair few macro videos. He always gets nice shots. Let's go see what he's up to. Let me spin this round. You found a shroom you like? Uh, yeah, we're focusing on these ones at the minute. So, um, nice I was saying on my video a little bit earlier, it's a bit difficult at the moment. There's no fog or anything. It's really busy in the forest. So just trying to focus on little things really, little details and things that I can focus on as a subject. So I've got some of those earlier, the big mushrooms up there on the top. They are all looking very nice, I think I'm going to follow suit with the shrooms soon. Obviously make sure you check out his video for the full shots. I'm going to go shroom hunting. I'm kind of struggling a bit today. The two images you might have seen by now, I don't know if I'll show you yet. I'm not 100% happy with. Um, I'm not sure what it is. Just maybe the lack of fog and struggling to get separation. It's not quite happening. Um, and I've not really found any mushrooms that I really want to sit pictures of yet. Um, the ones Rob got was nice, but I didn't want to completely steal his shot. So, I'm going to head down to the water a little bit. Um, long exposures always do it for me. So yeah, just trying to find a way down. I'm going to go have a little look. So I've come down to the waterfalls and sure enough, I found a composition I like straight away lovely little fall and the way i'm framing it i'm shooting through the rocks a little bit which creates like a little glimpse like a little glimpse of the waterfall and they, they create a bit of a v do the the rocks and then just behind it there's a lovely tree sort of snaking away not quite as ancient and uh, rugged as them ones up there but it still looks nice and then behind that is a whole lot of orange leaves on the floor so it makes it really stand out really pop um i'm gonna stick the nd10 on uh, for the waterfall and then I'm going to have to do a separate exposure with a quicker shutter speed for that tree in case it moves I don't want any leaf blare, any trunk blare, anything like that 
and while I'm at while I'm doing that I'll also do a focus stack I might as well while I'm doing it so focusing on the waterfall with the I think it's about two and a half minute long exposure get really nice smoothed out water and then a quicker one for them trees focusing on the tree at around f8 on both images when I blend them together it should come out looking nice yeah hopefully it'll look nice if it is here's the image Well, as I was up there taking that shot, Rob was down here taking a shot and I was kind of looking back over my shoulder thinking something looks nice down there and he must have been thinking the same as we finished our shots we had a little swap, a little composition swap so yeah I've come down to these falls and it's really nice, some really nice colour in it all kinds of little falls and I'm not really sure what Rob did, I don't know if he's punched in a little bit because I can certainly see a lot of punched in shots there um, but I'm going to go a little bit wider it's interesting to see, I'm going to be interested to watch his video to see what he did here and also to see what he's doing over there now just we are very similar photographers but obviously we've just got a slight different take on things but I'll show you what, what I'm looking at in a minute let me flip this round camera's on a little bit of a lean because we're right in near the water hanging over the edge a little bit and I'm also trying to avoid this branch here and then rocks there as much as I can so I'm kind of leaned over a bit, which is, um, you know, it's a bit daunting. I'm worried if my camera might fall in, but we'll do how to get the shot. Well, yeah, here's my composition. We have two falls coming down the outside of them, big cluster of rocks, which got loads of nice colour on it, loads of nice oranges, greeny moss. It'll be really contrasting as you can just see a glimpse of that, that tree trunk in the middle uh, with a couple of ferns coming off it. And yeah, the water just meets in the middle of the bottom right of the frame so there's a bit of a diagonal theme going from top left to bottom right um, and I'm really liking it I can certainly see a lot of individual shots with it but I'm quite enjoying this wide angle shot as it is settings wise with a 28 to 70 on at 28 mil and just the polarizer on got six seconds from f16 and ISO 100 I could probably go down to around f13 but I'm just bumping it a little bit higher just to get six seconds um, I didn't want to put the ND10 on I think 6 seconds would be nice for this just leave a little bit of structure in the water but uh, yeah let's take this shot and I'll show you the image well I've started punching in a little bit now down here Rob's just back from his little trip up there how did you get on up there Rob? Yeah, good. Really good shot. I'm interested to see what yours came out like. Um, I used a little bit of the wide angle afterwards. I found that that helped getting more of the nice orange background and the wall falling at the same time. When I was using the 2470, I, I couldn't quite get as much of both of the elements that I wanted. Yeah. But yeah, it's really nice to it, see. Bit of an hard balance when it getting in the right amount of waterfall and that nice colour at the back. But yeah. you went a bit wider, yeah. Yeah. We'll see how mine turns out. I think I was. I rushed it a little bit because I was dying for a wee to be honest but um, it might turn out nice so yeah I'm punching a little bit more down here now where I stole um, Rob's composition uh, just punched in a little bit let me try and flip this for you this is what we're looking at and what I really like is them branches just sort of going through the middle obviously there's some lovely colour on them rocks and a nice flowing water it will look nice but it's, yeah it's them them trunks that I'm liking I think it's what I'm really liking about it I wanted to go longer with the ND10 I'd, I'd go long for everything normally but there's a little drip of water just going through it and if you go longer in two seconds it starts blaring the the trunks it starts obscuring a little bit so at two seconds I think it'll just do it right I think we'll get a nice bit of motion and we won't obscure them roots too much Let's try and take the image. There's my settings. Uh, just the polarizer on. 28 to 70 on at 70 mil. Well, I've just found this really small little shroom. It's um, 
perhaps about 15 millimeters tops and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot in portrait really shallow depth of field f3.5 with a 28 to 70 get a nice blared foreground amongst these leaves these brown leaves you can see blared background with that bokka you can see the light at the back I'm just focusing on that I'm not really geared up for macro stuff at all so it's going to be quite small in the frame but I'm hoping it it looked nice, you know, a lot of negative space and just a tiny little mushroom amongst it. I might have to crop in a little bit, I might have to super res it in Lightroom. But with a bit of dark and moody editing, I think it'll look really nice. I can't show you what I'm going to do because I'm having to get really close to the ground, put the camera on the floor, I can't be on a tripod. But uh, yeah, here's the image anyway. Well, as you can see, I'm back in the car. Uh, I've left Rob down there. Unfortunately, I've got to rush back. Ozzy's not too well. And um, for as much as Becca was saying, don't rush back. Uh, try not to worry me too much. I could tell she was a little bit stressed. So yeah, the trials and tribulations of fatherhood, which comes before photography, obviously. Uh, but it's been a good day anyway. I think I've got a couple of images I'm happy with. I was interested to watch Rob work his process, see what he's looking for, especially them two middle shots around the waterfall where we swap locations. I asked all his composition and he's still man. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he does with them, how he composed them. I'll definitely be checking out his video, you should too, and uh, see the difference. Uh, but you should go subscribe to him anyway, he's a great photographer, great YouTuber. I love watching his work, macro stuff or landscapey stuff. He does a bit of street as well. He's just interesting to watch. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It really does help the channel. I appreciate the support massively. Uh, it gives a thumbs up, all that good stuff. It really does help. I'm gonna blast some uh, Bjork and I'll uh, see you on my next one.